everyone. Thanks for watching the Liturgy of the Word for Tuesday in the 27th week of Ordinary Time. Let's sing Lord I Need You. <laughs> Everybody, welcome. Today is uh, Tuesday, the 27th week of Ordinary Time, and today's the Feast of St. Bruno. Uh, St. Bruno uh, was the uh, uh, a founder of a, a group of hermits, actually, called the uh, Carthusians. And uh, where I go on retreat up in New York, uh, uh, they are uh, of the spirituality of St. Bruno. They're Carthusians up there, and they live as hermits. And um, so you, I go up there and I have a hermitage. And one day I should show you some pictures about the place and what it looks like. But uh, you just go up there to, on retreat. And uh, I don't see much of anybody for the whole time I'm up there except for during Mass. But it's, it's a community of uh, religious uh, under the, uh, um, the charism of or Carthusians, under the charism of St. Bruno. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask our Lord Jesus for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us today in word. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who called St. Bruno to serve you in solitude, grant through his intercession that amid the changes of this world, we may constantly look for you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when he, who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went to Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any of the other apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God I am not lying. 
Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who once was persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Search me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. You have searched me, Lord. You have searched me. formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. You have searched me, Lord. You have searched me, Lord. My soul also you full well. Nor was my frame unknown to you when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered a village where women, where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burned with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do all the serving? Tell her to help me. And Jesus said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and worried about many things. There is, only, there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I think in, in previous days, uh, this gospel uh, would mean that the contemplative life, uh, the life of prayer and solitude, St. Bruno, if you will, the life of Mary in our story today is superior to the act of life, uh, the life of Martha. And maybe you still think that is the case, but now I think the, a, bigger, a better understanding of all this and in the whole context of Luke's gospel is that they somehow desperately need to go together. They desperately need to go together. The active and the contemplative need to go together as one. And I would say today, more than anything, the one that is really, really neglected in most people is the contemplative one, the solitude one, the prayer one, the whole idea of prayer, which Jesus says in the gospel is essential 
Mary has chosen the better part, but it does not mean that he, he, he's talking about excluding the active part. Let's look at the first reading for just one moment. In Paul, he has this remarkable experience on the road to Damascus. So what's he do? He takes off for three years and goes to live in the desert in Arabia to just try to make sense of what happened to me? What does all this mean? If I could be personal for just a moment, when my uh, experience happened to me at the age of 24, it took me a good four years to try to unwrap just exactly what that meant. And it was only four years later that I went into the seminary. So it took me four years of praying, pondering, reading to make sense of this experience and its purpose and meaning in my life. And after three years, then Paul goes to see Peter. But he had to pray. He had, he had to ponder. He had to think, what, what, what really just happened to me? And I think that's true for all of us. The Christian life is meant to be a mix of prayer and, and activity, this openness to God. So let me ask you folks, how's your prayer life? Are you praying every single day? Is there something you do every single day in your prayer life that begins to make sense of all the activity that you do. Many of us are pretty busy with a lot of different things. If we're not praying, it just seems to me it becomes one great big crazy world that has no focus, no purpose, if we're not a people also of prayer. Also, probably, our activity takes on more time than our prayer does. I'm not asking you to pray long. I'm asking you to pray well. I'm asking you to pray every single day. I don't care if it's 15 minutes, but if you do that every single day, without fail, it'll make a huge, huge difference in your life. Let me tell you a little story. Sorry story about this uh, 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 building contractor. And he goes to a parent-teacher conference about his son. And he sits down and uh, um, he introduces himself to the teacher. And then he, he begins to cry. And the teacher's kind of taken aback a little bit. Like, like, why the tears? He finally gathers himself and says, my son doesn't live with me anymore. My wife and my children left me. I would work 18 hours a day thinking I'm buying all them, all these wonderful things in life, all the things money can buy. I'm going to get that for them. Sadly, I forgot that what they really wanted was a husband and a father. Don't let that be said about all of us, that we get so busy with things. And some of us are pretty busy that somehow we miss the deeper meaning of life. And we can, if we don't be merry sometimes, Mary every single day, praying every single day, being vulnerable before God and putting in the time. Here's our questions for today. Do you relate to Martha or Mary? And I'm hoping you're going to say both in some sense. What is the one thing that Jesus, Jesus says is needed in our lives to make them full, complete, and purposeful? God bless you and looking forward to seeing you once again tomorrow.